The following practical will give you an overview on the Lua scripting language. Lua, pronounced Lua, means moon in Portuguese, and it is a powerful, efficient, lightweight, embeddable scripting language, which allows you to program with different paradigms, like procedural programming, object-oriented programming, and functional programming. The tutorial is divided in the following chapters. We start to get acquainted with the terminal, how to open it. We'll see the torch REPL, read, evaluate, print, loop, to have an interactive session with the Lua scripting language. We we'll learn how to write comments, how to use numbers, operators, and mathematical functions on these numbers, how to write strings. We will learn about nil and the who function the while and for loops, and the tables. Moreover, we'll see how to write functions, how to quit our REPL, and at the end, how to write modules and local variables in scripting files. To open a terminal on OSX, we can press Command and Space to open the Spotlight search. Then we can type Terminal and press Enter to open the terminal. On a Ubuntu machine, we can press Ctrl, Alt, and T. The terminal will open. To have the same settings I'm using on this machine, you can go on this website and follow the instructions. If you're using the virtual machine we provided for the class, all the settings are already on your machine. To learn some Lua syntax, we'll be using the Torch REPL, which is a read, evaluate, print, loop interactive um, top level interface. The tutorial can be found at this location. To open torch REPL we can simply type th. Uh, to type a comment I can simply type uh, a double dash so this is a comment and press enter. By pressing ctrl L we can clear the screen. To insert a multi-line comment, we can type dash dash open square brackets, type uh, our multi-line comment, and then we can close it uh, in a similar way with dash dash close close and press enter. Uh, we are going to be talking now about uh, variables and numbers. Uh, all numbers in uh, Lua are 64-bit uh, doubles, so basically are co like real, we don't have integers, we don't have float, we don't have other types. Um, so for example, uh, number equal 42, and if I press number and press enter, we have 42. We have the five standard operations on numbers, uh, summation, subtractions, multiplication, division, and the reminder for the uh, integer division and we have also a mathematical library uh, we can access by typing math dot pressing twice the tab character we have a list of uh, more advanced functions uh, for example we can compute the absolute value uh, of 5 minus 7 on expression which is evaluating to minus 2 and then we have uh, the absolute values of minus, minus 2 which is plus 2 um, so strings. Uh, for example, we can have s equal uh, this is a string, uh, or we can have, for example, t equal double quotation um, double quote string, which is exactly the same of the previous one. Uh, or one more uh, way to write a string is going to be using the square bracket operator. So we can write uh, square bracket, square bracket, um, multi line string definition. And then uh, we can print them by just typing S enter or T enter or U enter. And we notice that we have inserted a empty line at the end because the last couple of square brackets were on the new line below.
We can undefine variables by assigning to them the nil value. Uh, we can kill the last string, for example, by typing u equal nil. Uh, if we check now the, the variables that we have defined with the function who, we can see that we have just t, num, s, and result, which is the output of the last command. Control L once more to clean the screen. Oops. So we can type while, and then we have a condition which has to be evaluated. Uh, for example, uh, num below uh, lower than 50. Do. Now we can have uh, we can type the, the the body of the while loop. For example, num equal num plus one, and then type end. And then we can verify that num now it's 50. So we sum 1 to num from 46, that was its previous value, up to the point in which uh, it is 49, and we still sum 1, so we end up uh, to 50. In a similar way, we can also write a for loop. Uh, for example, uh, for i uh, equal 1 to 5, do. Uh, and then we can do io.write we can write i dot dot space and then we do and the output are gonna be the numbers from 1 to 5 in a similar way we can also write a for loop with a one more extra parameter which allow us to write for example the numbers in a reverse order for example for uh, i that equal uh, 5 to 1 and the increment is going to be minus 1 do again io write i concatenate a space and then end and then we have the reverse sequence another common way to use for loop is with uh, arrays uh, we can type for uh, index and value in uh, i pairs of the following um, array so a b c d do print index and value and so we have that the indexes of this uh, list of values are 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the corresponding values are a, b, c, and the string d. Uh, in a similar way, we can do um, a for loop over a dictionary or a generic table, and it's very similar, so it's gonna be so for key and the value uh, in pairs, so there is no i in this case, and then here we have our dictionary. Uh, a equal 3, b equal 5, c equal 8, and d equal 2. Do print the key and the value. And um, so it prints all the keys a, b, d, and c with their corresponding values 3, 5, 2, and 8. But it's important to notice there is no uh, order. So in a table, there is no order. Whereas in array, which is a table in which the key are corresponding to integer starting from one up to the length of the uh, of the table, uh, will have will maintain order when used with the uh, i pairs function. Therefore, we have seen that there are two types of tables. Uh, there is the list or array version, and there is the dictionary. Um, so let's start with the first one. Uh, we have uh, table one equal, and I can write here um, a list of values, for example, a string, uh, a number, uh, a boolean, true, um, 
I can write again number and one more string and then I can see what T1 contains by typing T1 and press enter. Uh, we can access different values of a table which is a list by typing uh, T1 and then I put a number for example number 4 and then I access the, the fourth element which is equal to 3 and I can uh, even type T1 uh, of 4 and I can assign a new value, value for example false and then if I print T1 we can see that the fourth value has been changed from 3 to false. Um, the dictionary instead are the most generic table we can uh, think of. Uh, to define a dictionary is very similar to the way we define a list table. So we have to specify the key in this case. So we can call for example key ABC and we can have equal to 4 then key def equal 9 um, key 3, number 3 uh, equal to a string uh, and then we can close this one so if I type t2 now we have that uh, to access these different values I can type t2 dot tab tab and I have just the string version of the uh, key so I can do ABC press enter and we have the number 4 or t2 dot tab tab def enter number 9 but to access numeric uh, positions I have to use the square bracket operator number 3 uh, in the same way I could also access the string operators by um, the square bracket and ABC. So let's see how we can append and add new elements to lists and dictionaries. So let's start with T1. We can do table tab tab um, insert uh, to table 1 the element 8 and then if I print T1 we will have the new element in position 6 containing the value 8. To know the size of a table we can use the hash operator t1 with the hash in front will give us the length of our list. Uh, so for adding a new element to a list we can do t1 and we say size of t1 plus 1 and then we put uh, our new value and then we have t1. Uh, if we do type t1 of number 9 and we assign a value this one uh, t1 is no longer a list but becomes uh, a generic table and i pairs won't work on a, a sequence of numbers that are not contiguous uh, for dictionaries so let's take out t2 we can define new uh, new items uh, simply putting a dot uh, the name of the new key and then we can assign uh, a new value and then if I do t2 we can see here it's assigned a new value let's use now functions uh, to determine how to see how Lua uh, works with conditional statements. Um, so I can define my function, uh, let's call it f, which takes a, a input parameter x and does the following. So if um, x then uh, print and then x itself else print false and still x itself so we can see what it is equal to 
uh, we close the if and then we close the function. So of course if we send to f true it's gonna evaluate true and it's true and then if we send false it's going to evaluate as false and then it's false. Uh, now interestingly uh, we can also try to send uh, values that are not boolean. So everything that is not uh, nil which is gonna be evaluated as false is, doing, is considered true. So f of a numeric value it's true, f of a string it's also considered true and f of a table uh, let's put a simple list it's also considered true. We can exploit this language feature to uh, implement default uh, values for uh, function param parameters. Uh, let's create a new function, function g of x, and which is going to be simply printing uh, x if it's defined, or we just uh, predefine a value for it. So e x equal x, or uh, Let's put the string undefined. Here what happens is that if x is a value, so if it's um, anything that is not nil or false, then x is going to still be, uh, is going to be x itself. If instead we send uh, a nil or a false value, uh, the or will simply return the uh, second argument. So if I do here print x and we can see uh, if I call g with a value, it's gonna print the value, uh, even a string uh, or uh, if I send nothing means I send a nil inside which is the same or I send a false but that's not how it's used usually it's gonna be uh, taking the uh, value we have just predefined here similarly we can define inline if statements so let's create a, one more function uh, function h of x and in this case I would like just to print um, so if x is greater than 0 uh, and we're going to output plus or we are going to put a minus. So the function between the parentheses um, says if x is greater than 0 then the first one is going to be the output of our, um, of our evaluation of statement. Otherwise, if this is uh, false, with the end is also be false, and as we saw before, the or will be outputting the second part. So let's try uh, end. So h of three is going to be a plus, and h of minus nine, it's a minus. Functions can also return functions. Uh, for example, write our function other x, which returns another function. So functions are first citizens in Lua, which doesn't have a name, and we call on the parameter y, return x plus y, and and then we end the other function. So if we call other with a value of 5, a is a function still. So we can call a with a number 2, and this one is going to be evaluating to number 7. Okay, so now we see the last part, uh, which is 
quite important and are um, the modules how to play with external files so we can quit the treble by typing control D and then yes Y for yes we'll use Tmax in order to split uh, the windows in two parts uh, let's cd into deep code which is the directory where I will, where I will put my files and let's start with uh, my module so I call this module mod.lua um, this is my first demo module uh, so I start with local uh, m equal the empty table uh, local it's necessary so that uh, I will not be polluting the whole code with my variables but um, I will keep them private to this file so let's define the first uh, helper function uh, say my name which is simply printing uh, my name and then um, a function which is going to be uh, inside the table above so m dot say hello which print um, uh, hello there and then say my name and and then we have the, the function the actually the module returns uh, the table M and that's it so I can save um, I split my windows call it control A and quotation so control A plus quotations uh, and here we can uh, call uh, our REPL torch control L for cleaning the screen uh, mod equal require mod and then if I print mod we see it's a table uh, with a function say hello um, so control A K to go up so say, na say my name, it's a local function which is local to only the mod.lua file um, and therefore it does not appear below control A, J to go below um, we can try to call say hello mod.say hello and then yes, it's gonna uh, print out what we expect if I try to call the other function mod say my name we will get a attempt to call field say my name a nil value because it's undefined because it's local to the mod uh, file let's go above control a k uh, let's go at the end oh, sorry so here before returning uh, let's put also a print uh, all code and then we save we go below control a j so we can do require mod as we did before and well nothing happened we don't have the print uh, all code executed anywhere uh, this is because uh, low require does cache the files so once it's it's run once it won't run again uh, the, the code if you'd like to run uh, the new code we already we just saved we had to use do file and then we had to put the name of the file mod.lua uh, again here we can call mod uh, equal and then all code loaded cool if I do again the same perhaps I change here mod2 still all code loaded but if I do mod3 equal uh, require mod it won't print all code loaded and actually mod3 it's the uh, previous um, 
mod we have run the first time. Uh, if we'd like to run, uh, to load the code, but do not run at the same moment, we can do uh, in this way. We can do f for file equal load file, and then I can say it's like the uh, do file, but it doesn't do it. It just loads it from in memory. So mod dot lua, and so f it's a function, and if I run the function, done. It uh, actually executing the code. Uh, the last. Uh, the last interesting uh, load file, load string, load command is um, this one. It's called load string. Uh, and here we can write um, a command. So one, two, three. And load string, so g is a function. If I call g, g is going to be evaluating the string we. Uh, send to g. As a general reminder of good practice, always use local variables in your script unless you are you are in the triple and you are uh, coding with the interactive interface which does not allow you to uh, properly use local variables. Um, local variables are mandatory in order to do not pollute the uh, scope of the whole program.